backdrop of the harbour behind me, we've come up to St Nicholas's Church, which was established in 1178, and it's a Norman church. And I'm at the north, no, the east end of the church, which you can see has been rendered. And I'm assuming that that is to protect it against the prevailing winds. And I'm just about to wander along the south side of the church. Let me get onto the footpath that leads me up to the south entrance. And as you can see, you've got all the windows with the stone mullions all up at the side. Buttresses there with stone capping. The tower could have been an earlier fortified position with its view of the harbour entrance. But this is the porch entrance there with some rather intricate boards or gable boards going up through there. Let's have a look on the inside of the porch. Lovely curved archway into the the old oak door. There's a sign there that says this church is over 800 years old. It has been extensively repaired so that it may continue to be so sorry so that it may continue a place of worship and a haven of peace. Please contribute to its maintenance by placing a donation in the box near the church door but there are, unfortunately there is not there is not one there. We've got an interesting we've got a buttress here which I spotted just now that's got um, wood shingle as a cap. As I back away from the tower, you can see that it's constructed mainly of flint. But as I tilt up, the tower roof is all of wooden sh shingle. And you've got the old stone mullions, very old stone mullions around there. And as I come round this way, the church is dedicated to St Nicholas, the patron saint of sailors, and served a harbour community of farmers and sailors. The congregation was boosted by the development of the, of the airfield in 1936 and following it, their departure in 1976 almost closed down but the support of the present and past parishioners and a succession of army chaplains has enabled St Nicholas Church to remain open to worshippers but I've just noticed here in this uh, north wall these two stone pillars and if you look at them carefully you can see how the stonework curves slightly left and right and then goes up and follows a curve around the top of this window and similarly with this window here you can follow the line of it if you look at the render there that's been put into you know, shore up some of the crumbling walls you can follow the line of it up and that's the line of the stonework which you can see just there on the right hand side and there on the left hand side you can see the stone running up that way but I did notice on the far end of the church that the um, stained glass or no the leaded light windows was of a very intricate design let me just wander around so I can have a look at this on the end here and if I show you that there, they're quite intricate and I think they are stained glass we can't see it from this side but from the inside we would be able to but there are some very old headstones here that we've noticed but one in particular 
just in front of us it's got the ivy growing over the headstone I think I heard Steve and Cynthia say that a person died in 1500 and something I can't actually see the dates on there but over here is a lovely area that has been set aside for the war graves and let me just quickly have a a walk, a silent walk around these headstones When you see the age of the of the boys, men that died, the ones I've just showed you, the eldest was 23. The others were 22 and 21. But the war graves go right up there. There is one centre stone there, which I will go up and film. And when it's the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain, I think it's quite apt for me to be able to show you these headstones. And I will show you this one. Unfortunately, my shadow is going to be there. 1939 and 1945 in memory of those who gave their lives for their country. <laughs> 